We're here at the 15th annual Asian Film Festival of Dallas, and Frankie, I'll, I guess I'll let you introduce yourself in your film. Tell us a bit about yourself in the film. Hi, so uh, my name's uh, Francisco Aguilar. I'm uh, the producer, director, and a few other things of uh, a documentary, Korean Fried Chicken, that I filmed in uh, Seoul, South Korea, uh, last summer. And in, uh, the film Korean Fried Chicken is premiering here at the Asian Film Festival of Dallas in the best documentary short category. And I'm very excited to be here. Thank you. Perfect. Well, I've got to ask then, um, how did you find out about this opportunity to go to Seoul? Like, when did all this kind of come about? Because you're, you're in Ithaca. I mean, how did this kind of Yeah, so uh, I'm an Ithaca college student. I'm a senior now. And during my uh, junior year, I have a, one of my friends who's a film student. He's an Italian citizen. And he uh, was telling me over the summer about how he was going to be doing uh, this action thesis film in Italy because he he's from Italy. And he was just telling me all, all about it. And uh, I knew I wanted to be out there. So I had the opportunity to go out there and to be shooting on location with uh, professional actors and professional gear out on a student level. It was truly a, it was an amazing experience to you know, experience that. And once I had that experience of being abroad, uh, I just, I, I caught like the bug. I, it, was, it was an amazing experience and I knew I wanted to do it again. So I came back from that experience and I, I was doing it my spring semester and I was taking a, a film class and one of my professors, uh, Professor Chang, he actually is, uh, went to Hanyang University, that's where we stayed out in Seoul. And he kind of mentioned to me about uh, the summer program where you can you know, you go to Seoul, take uh, one of our classes that I needed to take and you could experience abroad and once he told me about the opportunity to go abroad after I just went to Italy I wanted to jump on that opportunity as soon as I could because to experience to immerse yourself in another culture to make another film in another country again that's something that I did not want to miss the opportunity on and tell us a bit about your background I mean you've, you're Cuban-American I mean you've got your own food love <laughs> if you look at it that way but oh, yeah um, was it was it fun to, like you said, I mean, Italian now, Korean, must be fun just to, to go through the food levels of the different countries. Oh yeah, countries. so I won't lie, I had uh, the world's best pizza in Italy, they had <laughs> the, the plaque on the wall and everything, so it's very official, I ate there maybe six times a day, but the, the food in Italy is just, it's really, it's so fresh, so, so uh, you really, I can't, it's, to go out there and experience the food, it's something that I would want to, it's something I, I'm definitely going to try and do once again to go out there and experience that food. The, in Korea, the, the culture is a lot different than it is in the United States, which that took a, a little bit of getting used to. But the, the language barrier was easily the hardest thing to experience in Korea, just not speaking the language. But uh, being a Cuban-American, it's uh, both my parents were born in Cuba. They uh, fled the country because it's, it's not a good situation there at the time. And uh, to, to even now, uh, recently, see what's happening there now as a Cuban-American, like, I really want, would like the opportunity to go out there and you know, see my homeland and kind of document the whole experience, what is happening there. Because it is so new and the culture there is it's very... You know, Cuban food, just like as you were saying, it's it's very you know it's distinctive, it's very good, and to, I would definitely uh, would want to try and to go out there. I know the relations are kind of hectic right now, especially <laughs> me being a Cuban American, and uh, but uh, the food, it was really cool to experience the food of Italy and Korea. So, looking at the documentary, how did you meet? you know, the families and people in the film. How did those interactions start and come about? So, uh, just like the filmmaking process, the filmmaking process, I would say, it's a, it's a family environment. Uh, if you're gonna, you know, I see a poster right there for Tarzan, for the legend, legend of Tarzan, and, you know, if you're gonna go and try to make a movie like that by yourself, uh, good luck, because <laughs> I don't think it's gonna happen. The filmmaking process, you know, it's, it's you need like a, a family, you need your crew, and that's so something when I uh, went out to Korea, I uh, went there alone. I uh, didn't know anyone who was going. I just, I really wanted to go there to um, experience the culture and to go abroad again. And once I got out there, you know, I, I met uh, the international students I was with and not even, not all of them were film students, but just to experience, to get with them and to, uh, we were, trying to figure out what we wanted to really uh, do and once we figured out what our mission was for our film it was just going out there and talking to the people of Korea which it's really you know 
the, the people are the best part because without the help of you know the generous without the help of generous people, you, you, the filmmaking process wouldn't uh, it, it just couldn't be done. So you know we would go just to different uh, fried chicken restaurants and just you know talk to the owners and uh, the, the film it definitely you know talks about the struggles of running a, a fried chicken joint and you know unemployment and stuff like that. So I knew it was a touchy subject. So you know I want to work with them as much as they want to work with me in the sense that you know they're like it's they're doing me the favor so I have to extend the greatest gratitude towards them for allowing me for allowing me into their life so without the help of other people and just you know it's 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 great just to be able I remember being in Italy and uh, in the Milan um, train station and I don't I don't speak Italian I don't speak <laughs> Korean and it's just you know you're going up to someone new and saying hey can you help me out or it wasn't even that just because I remember being in the Milan train station and I had a, maybe I, I couldn't see the look on my face but the other people could because they came up to me and they're like oh like where are you looking where are you trying to go <laughs> and you know it's that little you know the extending the hand that is what kind of I think the filmmaking process is about because without the help of others you really it's you, you couldn't get the job done you, f you filmed this in under 25 days, if I'm not mistaken? So, yeah, uh, I was out uh, in Korea for uh, one month, and uh, the, the, um, the program lasted about 24 days, of the actual uh, film program. And we shot, we conceived the idea, shot it, and edited the whole thing in 24 days, actually. And that was a little bit of a challenge, <laughs> just because um, we knew we had the time frame, but it's just, you know, you want to get as much done as you can and you want to make the film as best as you can but you know you have that deadline and I remember you know my film uh, my professor Chang he says like when you have a, a screening set you know you have to deliver because you know people are going to come see your film and you and it's very important that when you you know say, say that my film's going to screen that you're, you're going to screen the film and we at that timeline it, it put a little bit of a a strain on us sleeping wise and not maybe give, getting able to experience Korea as much as we wanted to because I knew that I was only there for you know the, the fine out amount of time and I was trying to I wanted to experience as much as Korea as I wanted to but at the same time I knew this film was important to me and I wanted to make it as as well as I could so it was a little bit of a balance fighting that as long as well as fighting the sleep battle because as as we began to shoot more and shoot more and the time began to cr uh, the time crunch began to increase our biggest uh, struggle was uh, translation because I don't I, like I said before I don't speak uh, Korean and just the that process was definitely difficult but uh, to get it all done in 24 days it was. I'm looking back at it now and I am really happy and just almost like shocked that we were able to do it because it's it's not about it's a short it's a short amount of time but I'm really happy with the product and I hope I can you know have the opportunity to go out to Korea one more time or more times if I can and just you know experience the culture more and not more of a, a tourist and less of a filmmaker I would say maybe well the fact that you were picked in the documentary category not a student category even though this very much was a student experience a student abroad experience that must mean a lot to you I mean it showcases a how much work was put in this film but how good this film really is I mean you're competing or not competing but you're in a category with legit documentary shorts that didn't have these stipulations it didn't have you know student backing and being in a foreign country I mean that you made a hell of a movie yeah I definitely being in Korea, it was a, a tremendous experience because uh, my time at Ithaca College is a, a little bit of a it, had, it had its up and downs. I actually originally went to Ithaca as a football player, and I was a business major, and uh, it was I had a great time being on the football team. But I knew that I wasn't going to go play for the New York Jets. So after my freshman year, I decided to quit the football team because I needed to focus on my grades. And once I did that that small step of quitting the football team, it kind of, uh, the, the, my next fall semester, I knew uh, my grades weren't as well as I thought I would be with quitting the football team, having more time on, on my hand. But at that time, I knew that the business major wasn't exactly what I wanted to do with my life. And I knew I wanted a change. And that next semester, that's when I started taking film classes. And 
it was a it was a great experience to be able to take those film classes. And uh, this doc kind of originally we had the idea of uh, failure and success because uh, I well it was my idea just because uh, it I saw myself as uh, failure and success because. I, uh, when you typically say the word failure, you might think, oh, like negativity, you know, bad image. But you, uh, people don't maybe. Uh, I was trying to, with that idea of failure and success, show that failure is very important, and you need to fail to succeed in life. You know, you're not going to grow up just to be president. You know, it, it's not a straight shoot. You know, you're going to have failures in your life, and that uh, failure of me not succeeding in business it led me to another stage in my life and where I wanted to go. And it was really important, only because uh, when I went to Korea, I was still applying into the film program, and uh, my GPA was, you know, I was really improving, I was doing really well as a, a film student, but my QM GPA just w really wasn't there. And then when I went to Korea, I came back, and uh, I officially applied to the film program, and I, uh, you know, I was taking film classes, but I was still a business major. So the film administration were kind of like, "Who is this kid?" Like, you know, and they, they knew who I was. Like, they knew I went to Italy. Like, and they, I had, I've, uh, you know, I've up to this point, I've made 29. Uh, I've been a part of 29 student projects at Ithaca College, and I, I like to immerse myself. And they knew exactly. They knew who I was because I was. I'm a passionate person. And when I came back, I, my, you know, I, I, it was my uh, third semester of taking film classes. I applied to the film program. The, you know, the dean told me it was going to be a 10-day process, and I heard back within 20 minutes that I got, I got rejected. And wow. uh, you know, it's something that I wasn't too surprised about because me and the dean had a, a history. Even though, uh, you know, my GPA. It, yeah, the, those last three semesters, I was averaging a three four, and I, I, I greatly improved my QM, but I was still just very close from what they wanted. But you know, once I came back from Korea, I realized that I didn't really need the recognition from that from them to say, oh, you're a film you're a filmmaker, because I recently went to Italy. I just came back from Korea, and I. When it, coming back from Korea, I was the director of the film. You know, I was in charge, and to do that, it really, it, it was a really good experience because I knew in my heart that I, I was the filmmaker. And so when I came back, I eventually switched to uh, one of my prof uh, faculty uh, professors. He mentioned to me the the Plan Studies program, which is the the Build Your Own Major program yeah. at Ithaca College. So eventually, I switched to a Plan Studies major in Film Producing, Production, and Studies. And I'm graduating uh, this December. I'm going to be taking my final semester in uh, Ithaca College. has a lot, uh, satellite campus in Los Angeles, which I'll be taking an internship there in two classes. And when you, uh, you know, I uh, going out, going back off what you said. Um, before I had the opportunity to go to Korea, I uh, was taking a class called Th Cinema Production Two, and I was uh, directing my second time, uh, my second film, second time directing. And I won't lie, the experience was absolutely horrible. I I, uh, I went through a lot of struggles. I you know, I I could go into a, a, a detail of, of what happened, but I'll say I'll spare you the details. But going off that ex going off uh, that experience, when I went to Korea, I knew exactly what I didn't what I didn't need to do, and more of what I needed to do, and more of what more I needed to get out of other people, and what it required as me as a director. So going to Korea, I had this whole new mindset, and it just the, when I first got there, I it just it felt amazing to be in, in Korea and just making the film I it was it was a, a really amazing experience and to be able ex to be accepted into the Asian Film Festival of Dallas like you said at not in the student category it really it really meant a lot to me I've got to ask then when since you've had you had that bad experience you've had that that failures before right before going was there a moment when you were in Korea where it just clicked and you knew okay I can finish this I can do this I know it's short time but this is how it should be going it's working oh uh, yeah definitely so so uh, in Korea we were taking I was taking only one class and you could take up to three classes uh, they recommended only taking two classes because each class was about three hours so taking nine nine hours of classes a day is kind of that's a little too much <laughs> for me at least <laughs> and so I only took the, the one documentary class and classes were only uh, Monday through Thursday and then 
I'm not sure if you know, but uh, South Korea is the number one drinking country in the world. And I went there when I was wow. 21, so it was you know, it was a great time. But uh, definitely, uh, just meeting with uh, uh, some of the international students, you know, it was we had uh, you know a good time there. And then as uh, you know, as the weeks, uh, the days, and the weeks started to progress, I realized that. I had to limit myself, uh, you know, from being a tourist and just being in Korea and say, hey, like, I, this, this is my film. And that was, it wasn't, honestly, it wasn't too much of a challenge because uh, I knew this, this film was important to me. And even though at the time, I, you know, I couldn't imagine myself sitting in this, in this chair at the Asian Film Festival in Dallas then, but I'm just, I'm a passionate filmmaker. and. I knew after that past experience, I wanted to, to, to make it right and to you know take control, to be in the lead. It, it felt good to you know have uh, people you know uh, they uh, some of the other uh, some of the other student filmmakers I was with uh, or some of the other students I worked weren't weren't actual film students. I was uh, paired with uh, some just you know international students that were uh, business majors you know uh, marketing uh, majors some uh, among others and just to have them know that like uh, I was a film major and to have them uh, ask on me for you know what to do and like just uh, you know because I had some more experience I just came from Italy and you know I was shooting on uh, in Italy we were shooting on red cameras we had a, a professional actor professional uh, Italian actors we had uh, an actor from Spider-Man 2 we had a pyrotechnic team we had a stunt team so being uh, in doing all that it kind of showed me the next level of filmmaking so like when I went to Korea even though I was you know I, I was in a foreign country there was a language barrier you know we weren't well, I wasn't shutting down roads like we were in Italy <laughs> but you know it just I knew what I needed to do and it felt great that I had the support even though if they weren't film students they just they were ready to help me out and be the support that I needed wow it's interesting to go from that big experience to more the guerrilla style students oh yeah it was like. definitely uh, run and gun guerrilla style filmmaking because uh, we got Seoul and you know I, it's Seoul's a it's a very 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 large city and they have a great public transportation system and uh, I know uh, just myself before uh, stuff started getting too hectic I had a, my class started at 1 30 and uh, I found this website, uh, 50 Things to Do in Seoul, and I would just try it and go down the list before my class would start. So I was able to experience, you know, some of those different parts of the city, uh, you know, and that was that was really great because I knew, you know, some oh, there's a, there's a restaurant here, there's a restaurant here uh, of, of chicken, because uh, once we decided that we wanted to do fried chicken restaurants, uh, we had a get as many <laughs> fried chicken restaurants as we could, which kind of made my diet kind of strictly fried chicken, but I'm not going to, it was, it was not saying it wasn't healthy, but it was very tasty. But, um, you know, just being in Korea was a great experience. A lot of drinking, a lot of chicken. Yeah, so uh, I, uh, in, in the doc, I go, I go into how uh, during the World Cup, that's uh, how in South Korea, the huge, the, the craze, as they call it, kind of rose because, you know, South Korea was doing really well. I think it was the 2002 uh, World Cup. Yeah, and they split the... Yeah, and they, that's, you know, everyone was kind of, they, they kind of jumped with the nation and uh, it just kind of, from that, uh, that event, you know, fried chicken, it was, it's... It's, I wouldn't say it's the staple of the <laughs> Korean diet. Definitely kimchi is. I don't know if you have never tried yeah, kimchi. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it, they serve it with everything there, and it's, it's really great. But it became almost a staple, you know, in the, just the, you know, the sporting event, fried chicken and beer, because their fried chicken is a little bit different than just the normal fried chicken here in America. They double fry it, and they have a, a very, uh, well, you know, each restaurant has their own little recipe, but it's just, it's, you know, the culture and the, it's the chicken, it's just a little bit different out there, and it's, it's some of the best chicken I've ever had in my life. You know, you, you had such a, a late switch while you're, you know, you already made it to Ithaca for sports, and then you're switching to film. I'm kind of curious, why film? Um, what, what made you passionate about film? What filmmakers did you like growing up? I mean, what made you get into this? Uh, so I definitely, as a kid, I was always, uh, I wasn't uh, the most, 
I wasn't the best student where, you know, I always, I, I was dominated by like video games, like, you know, maybe a lot of millennials probably would say nowadays, but movies and uh, video games, I just always was drawn to a story. And I kind of definitely, I, even just the story of sports, you know, there's like, you watch the game, there's a story right there, you know, what's going on with that story. And like, there's something about a story that really just ties me in. And I grew up, you know, just always, uh, playing video games and watching a lot of movies and I remember I, a, I live I'm from New Jersey and uh, I moved uh, like three times within uh, my hometown and my first house I remember it was, it was a pretty big house before uh, one of my parents lost their jobs but uh, I remember in our basement we used to have like all these movie posters and I kind of didn't even realize like subconsciously like how uh, big of an impact like film was in, on my childhood like I just had all these like you know, just like subconscious, like I, I, we had like maybe a hundred movie posters in my basement. Like, you know, film was a very big part of my life. And then, so growing up, uh, I eventually enrolled in a, a college and, you know, I played football there. And once I realized that the business major wasn't exactly what I wanted to do in the future, I kind of, I had this, I, I definitely had like the, uh, the drive to do some, something with cinema because I knew about the the Park School of Communications and yeah. I uh, even when I was looking at Ithaca I kind of was like oh maybe that would be kind of cool to do that but I applied to the School of Business because my parents thought it'd be a good idea and you know I actually I applied to the accounting program which <laughs> luckily I didn't get into that one but I got into the business administration program and you know I tried it out and I was doing it and it's just I didn't really have the self drive to do what it required and that's something that like you mean in Korea that that self that drive the just the the want the need and the want to do something like you know it, it, when you're in Korea it's it's pretty easy just to get drunk and you know eat some fried chicken but you know at the same time you got to make a film and you know so uh, when I was in uh, Ithaca and I wasn't doing uh, as well not that I wasn't I was doing pretty much what I was actually used to because I not that not to you know um, disrespect any football players and you know the intelligence at all but I was a jock in high school and that's what kind of got me into Ithaca College so I wasn't I didn't have the greatest grades and once I got to Ithaca it was the same thing I, I was on the football team I didn't my grades weren't su super and then once I quit the football team I you know I, I still was a, a business major and it just you know it kind of was almost, I'd rather be on the football team than not be a business major because that's something that, you know, football was something I've, I've done since I was three years old and it's something that's it's a big part of my life. But I knew that it's something that I had to stop because my grades just, they weren't where they needed to be going forward. So once I was able to quit the football team, it, which was a big step for me, it took me a, a lot of time to think about it and to actually come to the realization that like, it's it's not that that I could do it, but it's it's okay to do it. Maybe I don't know why I maybe thought like oh like I have to, this is something I have to do. But you know, once I was able to make that decision, I um, started taking film classes. And one of my uh, football friends uh, at Ithaca College, he was a film major. And uh, that spring semester, when I started taking my first film classes, uh, I you know I I was talking to him about oh, I want to do film and stuff like that. And he invited me on his film set. Uh, for his film and that was the f my first ever film set I was on and right then I knew I had the bug it was I would like to be in that environment of like it was uh, film, like on a film set it's a maybe it's high intensity like a lot of stuff's going on but like the second I got there like my I told my friend I was like hey like can I just help on set like I just want to watch and he was like oh yeah no problem so like I wasn't really even gonna be doing anything just kind of like looking and watching because I want to see if it's something I wanted to do and uh, right away I uh, kind of went from watching to I was second camera assistant <laughs> and you know we were working with a uh, the Sony F3 we had a steady cam so like it was even though it was like my first film set we had like all this like amazing equipment and like I was like this is like this is amazing and so I once I caught the bug there I was uh, that semester it was my first semester taking film classes and I was academically doing very very uh, well and I was doing much better than I was before so as a student that felt great to finally find I, I had a passion for the stuff uh, I was studying and you know once I was on that film set I knew I, I had the bug and it was just uh, from there you know the rest is history I guess. Wow.
Do you mind if I ask what, what you filmed on while in Korea? What, what equipment they had out there? So actually, yeah, uh, we had, uh, they, with the school, they brought uh, a Sony EA50, which is, okay. uh, it's not the best camera, which we actually, I brought, uh, I'm a, a photographer uh, as well as a filmmaker, so I love taking uh, just, you know, photography. And I have a, a Canon 6D, and I, I brought that over there. And we actually filmed the whole thing on my 6D because it's just, it's a little bit better than what we had uh, from the school. Not, you know, I'm really happy. I think the college was able to give us, you know, all the equipment we used, and we used it a lot for the B camera and just some other side stuff. But our, our main camera was just uh, my photography camera that we. I have a magic lantern. Maybe I shouldn't say that, but uh, <laughs> you know, we were shooting it on there, and it was just, uh, you know, to shoot on a DSLR. That was my first time ever doing that, and that was a different experience. You know, shooting from your traditional. Even though I would say no one shoots on film anymore, which we should, but uh, you know, a traditional film camera is going to be really big. Even though yeah. the digital cameras get keep getting smaller and smaller, but I was sh shooting on something that you could, you know you can feel on your hand. So that was wow. that was uh, you know it was a different experience. But you know, shooting on the, the on my 6D, it was it was a great experience. Knowing that the edit had to be so quick, how did you approach the editing? It must have been. I mean, you must have just been cutting a lot more than you yeah. would have liked to. So one of the scariest things I have to say is shooting an interview and, you know, I would, uh, you know, I wrote all the questions and I uh, w would set up the camera and then uh, we, I would have my translator, you know, ask the questions because uh, I don't speak Korean. And then there was something very scary about filming an interview and not knowing A, what was said, B, if, if it was a good interview, C, if you could use it, you know, I would just, you know, so we would start filming these interviews one by, like, one by one, and I maybe had, like, five interviews, and, you know, saying, say we had, like, you know, two weeks left, and we had all our interviews done, which we didn't have that much time anyway, uh, once we had our interviews done, but, uh, you know, we had all these interviews, and we had no idea what was really said, <laughs> so that was a little bit of a scary uh a uh, uh, situation to be in, you know, filming all these interviews and like getting all this footage and not knowing what A you really have. So that was a little bit scary, but you know, working with the translator, you know, it was it was a challenging, uh, you know, I know it was challenging for her because she was the only one that had to do it, but wow. she was a trooper and you know, Na Young Kim, you know, I remember you. <laughs> you know, you did a great job and you know, it was just, uh, it was it was challenging, but at the same time, you know, you have to. You have to it's just you got to take it one day at a time. And then you know, as we finally uh, had our, we're at that we're coming. You know, we're coming to the end of it. We had maybe a week left. You know, we had to start. Uh, we had to switch from you know the shooting phase to the editing phase, just because we knew the whole process was going to be ex expediated, just because you know we were only there for 24 days. But you know, once you know. It was it was definitely a different experience not knowing whether you you had a, an interview you could use or you, or not after filming it and waiting for the transcription that's crazy yeah yeah it was it was challenging <laughs> yeah so I've I've got to ask since you said that you uh, googled the 50 things to do in Korea this is your first time in Dallas first time in Texas I did the same tell thing tell me what you've uh, found in our city and tell us what you're gonna try and experience yeah so this is uh my third day here and you know first time in texas first time in dallas i mean i'm super excited to be here to experience this uh the city and the film festival uh today actually i, I got to go out to the jfk museum and the uh, reunion tower and it was a it was a great experience you know the jfk uh, museum was very informative very educational and very interesting because i mean way before my time but um you know, I've seen, uh, I've seen uh, what uh, all the controversy and, uh, and all the theories that are around it, and to just you know to be there to like actually see the window where like they say he was, and like you know just to see like even though like all the all the all the theories and like everything, because like I mean, what really happened? Like it's 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 hard to say, even though like I was at the museum and I I, I just experienced it, but because uh, all the it's just. It, that was a, a very, you know, interesting experience. I'm looking to, you know, I'm here for the rest of the week. I'm looking to go to the, the Botanical Garden. I'm looking to go to the Art District. I was a bunch of more stuff within Dallas, and I'm hoping to try to do as well as see as many as the films I can. But Dallas is definitely, it's a very dog-friendly city, which I've kind of noticed, which is kind of cool. I've never experienced a city where so, I've seen so many dogs, and it's, it's really cool. Just, you know, it's a, it's a very friendly city, and I enjoy it so far. Any food 
ideas that you want to definitely try? I mean, uh, so my girlfriend was telling me about Tex Mex. I definitely got to try the Tex Mex. Uh, everyone's telling me about tacos. I have to get some tacos and just uh, some barbecue, which I, you know, some authentic Texas barbecue, I guess. Well, so so that we can find out more information about you, tell us a little bit about um, where we can find out about Korean Fried Chicken on uh, social media wise, and also. Uh, you're on Instagram kind yeah. of filming this whole experience for us. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, you know, I have a just personal Facebook at uh, Francisco Aguilar. Uh, my email is uh, frankiej73 at gmail.com. And, you know, uh, just for any, any you know, information about the film. Uh, once, uh, now that the film has premiered uh, here at the Asian Film Festival of Dallas, I'm going to be looking more to, you know, show it publicly, like on social media and stuff like that. There's still a few more festivals I'm waiting to hear back from. So hopefully I could get, you know, maybe some good, uh, a little bit more good news. But, uh, yeah, I'm on Facebook at uh, Francisco Aguilar. Uh, Instagram at Francisco or Francisco Aguilar Photo. And uh, my Instagram account is definitely I'm trying to get Instagram famous. You know, I'm, I just uh, I've been uh, I've been able to go to Italy. I've been able to go to Korea. You know, I, I go to school in uh, upstate New York. You know, they have some really good scenery, some beautiful views, and I just try and capture. You know, I, I'm here in Dallas. You know, I, I got some great views at the Union Tower. I'm definitely going to be uploading one of those soon. And uh, you know, it's just I like I like to just you know document my experience and you know show. A little bit about you know I, I get to show you know um, uh, the poster for my film. I'm gonna be uploading more little snippets of the film and just you know more things about what I'm doing like here in Dallas and me as a filmmaker. Did you bring your Canon too? Oh yeah, I brought my Canon six. Uh, I'm trying to get maybe a few more lenses. I still have just the traditional 24 to 105. It only stops down to a 40. You know, all the real DSLR guys will know that that's eh, not too good. But uh, you know, it's it, it gets the job done. And, I, and I'm not about uh, you know a lot of people in on Instagram and you know just normal photography. They they like to do a lot of Photoshop. I just try and you know take a natural photo and just you know, document my experience and, you know, I, I have a, I was trying to get up to a thousand followers on Instagram before I left and I'm just about at 700 and, uh, you know, it's really, I've been trying to focus a little bit more on that because Instagram's very visual and, you know, I'm a filmmaker so it kind of works hand in hand and, you know, it's been a, I've really uh, been loving the feedback I'm getting up from uh, on Instagram, you know. I, in the last month, I've almost you know doubled my followers. A couple of my photos have over 500 likes on them now. So it's just it, I've been really liking it. Very cool. Well, folks can uh, still catch Korean Fried Chicken. It plays, uh, I believe, on Monday. Monday. Um, here at the Asian Film Festival of Dallas. And uh, Frank, thank you for the time, buddy. Oh, thank you.